Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Corey J and I'm an artist from Winnipeg, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I package up and ship out a painting um, using only materials from the dollar store. So normally when you package and ship paintings up, you know, materials can be expensive. So this is a good way to save on some costs. Now, typically I use recycled materials. So I try and source recycled materials, including cardboard and foam core and everything from big box stores. Um, be but because of the state of the world right now, that's been a little difficult for me. So today we're gonna use only materials from Dollarama. It's super cost effective and it's um, really great to send out your paintings this way because it provides a really nice box and a lot of support. So stick with me here. Okay, first we're gonna talk about materials. So the first thing you're gonna need is two of these tri-fold display boards. So I got these at my local Dollarama here and these are $2 each and you're gonna need two of them. Next, you're gonna need two of these pieces of foam core. These are $1.50 each. Then you're gonna need some plastic bubble wrap. So uh, two of these bubble wrap containers and each of them are $1.50 each. And then you're gonna need a couple other household items. So you're gonna need uh, an X-Acto knife, a pencil or some form of marking, utensil, and then a bunch of packaging tape. And also, you're going to need a cutting board. So if you don't have a cutting board, um, I obviously suggest investing in one because I use mine so much as a painter, um, just for cutting prints and cutting canvas paper and just a whole bunch of different uses. But if you don't want to invest in one right now, you can just use another piece of cardboard over top of your uh, cutting surface and then use that um, so that when you cut through, you'll just be cutting through to another layer of cardboard. And that's it. We're just going to use that and we're going to package up the painting. Oh, one last thing that you'll need is a painting or whatever you're going to ship. So today we'll be shipping out this painting here. It's called Koi Ship Savior and I will be sending it off to Pittsburgh in the United States. So in classic artist fashion, I forgot two items that you will also need. So one is going to be a long metal ruler that you can use to help cut. And then you will also need a plastic bag. Now I just use a kitchen catcher's type of plastic bag, um, but any plastic bag should do as long as your painting fits inside. Okay, so our first step is to take our painting and pop it in the bag here. Okay, so now you can see I've just taped up the sides and the top of the bag so it's nice and snug towards the painting. And this is our first step complete. Okay, to, so to start, you're gonna take your first piece of foam core and lay it down on your cutting surface. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your painting, place it on the foam core and add an inch to the top of the painting and add an inch to one of the sides of the painting. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pencil and you're going to mark on the side and along the bottom. These are going to be our cutting lines. Now the reason that we're adding an inch to the top and the side is that we want about a half an inch all around the painting so that it can float nicely in this nice little shell that we're gonna create for it. So next what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut on the two lines that you created. Now I'm just going to take the painting and place it on just to make sure that it's good all around and there's some space all around so that's good. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second piece of foam core 
line the first piece up from the corner of the second piece here, and then just trace and make uh, another piece of foam for the exact same size. And this will be the back. And then I'm just going to cut that out as well. Now I like to flip the ruler around and use this back part instead of the first part because if you cut right on the first part, it's not quite as even. There's a little bit of a gap from the cork pushing up the ruler. So I like to flip the ruler over and then just hold it really, really sturdy. Press it down and then do my cut this way. That way it's nice and exact. All right, and you should be left with two pieces of foam for exactly the same size that we're gonna sandwich the painting between. So our next step is to take our painting, place it in the middle here, and we're going to place the next piece of foam core on top. And then I'm gonna do a couple rows of tape across the front all the way around both sides, on the top here, and then on the sides. So what I'm gonna do is create a little painting sandwich, and that way it'll help protect the painting nicely in transit. Now, I'm going to put the bubble wrap around this after, so that'll be our next step. And the reason why I don't do the bubble wrap on top is because the bubble wrap has a lot of texture to it, and I don't wanna be putting any extra texture onto the canvas, as the canvas itself can be quite delicate. So that's why I like to use the sturdy board first and then use the bubble wrap after. I don't want the bubble wrap to make impressions into the painting. So yeah, let's get started taping. You want to make sure that the painting is in the right position, suspended in the middle here. Then you're going to put the second piece on top. And then I like to hang the painting off of the table a little bit so I can get all the way around it with the tape. I'm going to grab the tape and just go all the way around. Second side, and then I'm going to do the same thing horizontally. Okay, now that we have our little painting sandwich suspended within the two pieces of foam core, we're ready to move on to bubble tape. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with the bubble tape is I'm going to extend it and then I'm going to place the painting on top and pull over the top piece and kind of measure how I can get all the way around with one piece of bubble tape. And then I'm going to cut it there and I'm going to do another one that I can lay beside it like this so that I can wrap the whole thing in bubble tape. Make sure when you do this step to lay the bubbles facing down and the flat side facing up because we're going to tape the two pieces together. Now that I have both pieces facing down, I'm just going to run some tape along the back here. these two pieces of bubble wrap taped together. We're going to take the painting and place it on top and then we're going to package this up and secure the other side together. And then our next step is to do the two sides. So I just like to fold them in like a little present and tape up the sides. I put one piece just along the middle, just to hold it up, and then I'll tape across. Ok, 
Okay, so here's our first layer of bubble wrap. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the second package now and do the exact same thing over again to create a second layer of bubble wrap over the piece. Okay, so once you have your second layer of bubble wrap on, it should look like this, a nice little bubble wrap sandwich. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the outer layers, so the cardboard layers of the piece. So to start, you're gonna grab one of your trifold display boards. Now, I really like the look of the white being the outside and the cardboard part being the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna bend the sides in the opposite way. So now I have the white facing the outside. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my painting and pop it on. And my painting happens to fit perfectly into the trifold. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to measure the sides. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and lay it across the top of the package. And then I'm gonna lift up one of the sides. And I'm gonna make a mark where the ruler hits the side. Now I have a guide point to make my first bend so that I can have this top part hang over the box here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna lay it down flat and it happens to be two and a half inches. So I'm gonna measure two and a half inches on the other side. I'm gonna make a little line there. And I'm gonna lay the ruler flat to make my first line with the knife. Now, I'm not gonna cut through here. I just wanna make an indentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the back side of the knife without the blade protruding and just go into the cardboard, but not all the way down. So I'm just gonna press down so that I can make a little mark into it, but not cut all the way through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend, bend the cardboard at that mark. And then you can see that I've started to get a nice fold over my piece. So I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. But since I've already measured it, I know, and I can just go ahead with my ruler and make some ticks. So I'm going to do two and a half inches on one side and then two and a half inches across the top. And I'm gonna lay my ruler down flat and I'm gonna do the same thing. Use the back of my knife and just make an indentation into the cardboard. And then I'm gonna fold it up just by pressing gently. And now I have something that looks like this. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the top portion. So I'm gonna actually do the same measurements for the top here and the bottom part here against the painting here. So I'm gonna measure two and a half inches up. So I'm gonna measure two and a half inches up and just make a line. And then two and a half inches up on the other side here and make a line. Then I'm gonna go, go through again with the back of my knife. I'm just gonna do that on this first square. Then before I have the opportunity to pop that up, I need to cut it out. So I'm just gonna cut from the top down. Now that I've made that mark with the back of the knife, I'm just gonna pop this side up here. And now you can see that we have a bit of a box starting to form here. So now that I have this mark here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut off the two sides here at the same line. So to do that, I'm just gonna turn here and I'm gonna cut it. Okay, and what I'm left with looks something like this. So 
So if you see, I'm just going to put the painting down here. I have this part here, one side that goes over, a second side that goes over, and it looks like this. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. Okay, and now it should look like this. So you have two flaps on this side, these two flaps on this side, and your painting should fit real nicely right inside. So we got that, and we got this. So this is our first little box. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a box to fit over top of this and create another layer of protection. But before we do that, we wanna tape this part together. Okay, so one last step before I tape these sides to the top here and tape this part shut. What I like to do is I always like to include a thank you card. So I'll put that in there and I'll tape it down and then I'm going to go ahead and tape the sides together. All right, now that we have something that looks like this, we're ready to do the other part. So I'm just going to take this board again and tilt the arms back because again, I want the white side facing out. Then I'm just going to slide it underneath this painting here. I'm going to lay this one flat with the open side facing down. Now when I place this on top of here, it should fit exactly in the middle. And you can just test that by lifting up the sides here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the sides and then we're going to make a little lips on the top and bottom to fold up. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the sides here. So we're going to cut off these folding pieces. I just have the board here. And then I'm going to go through and make the same mark at two and a half inches up the side here and here and make a fold again. Then once again, I'm going to join them with my ruler and I'm going to use the back of my knife again just to make a bit of a puncture through the cardboard without cutting it. Then I can pop that up. And I'm going to take it and place it on here and just make sure that that works and that looks good. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this last little area here, but instead of measuring it, I'm just going to use the box as a guide here. So I'm going to lay down my ruler where the other edge hits actually just a little bit back from there. Make another indent with my ruler in the back of my knife and pop that up. And then this is ready to tape back onto your box. So I'm going to take the box, place it face down. And then I have these two last sides here that I will tape up and that'll be it. Okay, now that I have the top on, my box looks like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along any lines, any corners and tape them all up. So I'm going to add tape to any areas that fold over all areas on the back and the front and all four sides. So everything's nice and taped together and secure. So now that I have all of the edges taped and the corners taped really well, I'm just going to go ahead and add two more strips of tape all around the surface on the top here going all the way under and back to the top. So I'm going to go two, two, and then I'm going to go two this way, just like we did with the foam core. And that's going to add just a little bit more security and then we're done. All right. And this is the final piece here. It's nice and sturdy and thick and it's ready to go off and find its owner. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys learned a lot in this piece and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed and we'll see you soon. Bye.